Welcome to the live stream. How's everyone doing? If you are new here, welcome for the first time. <laughs> if you're returning, then welcome back. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, my name is Rob, uh, Rob the Maritimer, <laughs> and uh, I'll be here for at least an hour, maybe two, uh, all depending on how things go, how many questions you guys have, um, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. So um, uh, this is, uh, I went live last Thursday, some of you may or may not have known. Well, first of all, before I get into all that, uh, anybody who's out there, why don't you let me know where you're tuning in from? Uh, give me a quick hi and uh, let me know where you're, you're tuning in from, uh, where you're watching from. Uh, I am in Nova Scotia, Canada. Uh, for those of you who don't know where that is, that's on the east coast of Canada, on the Atlantic Ocean side. Um, so uh, yeah, up here, snow's all gone, <laughs> weather's getting nice. Um, love it at uh, springtime, so uh, hopefully things are fine where you guys are too. I'll uh, just get right into the chat here. Greg Hyatt says, I'll be here waiting on another amazing live stream. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Welcome back. Thanks for, uh, let me see if this is working out. There we go. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, I think you missed the Thursday one. So last week, uh, it was kind of an impromptu thing. I decided to go live on Thursday. I go live every Tuesday at uh, one o'clock Eastern. Um, but last week I thought, well, you know what? Maybe Tuesday doesn't work for everybody. Maybe I'll try a different day. So I, I post videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I go live Tuesday. So I thought, well, Thursday, let's go live. So we didn't have a lot of people in the uh, live stream, but I didn't really advertise that I was going live. So um, if you guys have a preference for when I go live, let me know. Um, I'm relatively flexible. Um, I think we'll keep going with the Tuesday thing for a while, uh, just because uh, that's that's what I've advertised at the end of all of my videos, <laughs> that, uh, that I'm going live Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and it just kind of works. Um, but the timing is hard because, I, I, I mean, when you, when you potentially have people tuning in from all over the world, who knows what time works best. So I think so far, most of the viewers uh, that have tuned in have been in the United States, uh, also some in Europe, uh, South Africa we had as well. Um, so that's kind of all over the place. So it, it's really going to depend on uh, on when you guys want me to go live. And I, I, uh, I may go live at different times just to test how things are going. Um, so uh, Greg says he's in Arkansas, U.S. That's right, I remember that. Uh, down in the southern states, welcome. Uh, Brian Pajak is watching from Massachusetts. Very good. Not that far from where I am, actually, <laughs> over the water. Um, I've actually done a, uh, well, kind of a nod to my the Maritimer theme. Um, I like to sail. I'm a sailor. And I've done the uh, Massachusetts to, it's called Marblehead to Halifax Ocean Race in a sailboat. I've done that a couple times. Um, Oh, it's about 20 years ago now since I last did it, but uh, very familiar with Massachusetts. I love Boston. Um, so welcome. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, Greg says, I'm so flexible. I should be Stretch Armstrong. Ha <laughs> ha, very good. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I guess as long as you know I'm going live, uh, there's a good chance you may, you may pop in. And that's good to hear. Awesome. So uh, what is new? Um, let me see. Yeah, so I mentioned, so uh, Rob the Maritimer, I've been toying a little bit with the idea of even changing the name. Uh, Rob the Maritimer is just kind of a branding thing. Uh, I live right on the coast. The ocean is literally right outside my, my door here. Uh, and I've grown up sailing and boating and all that stuff. Uh, love everything to do with the ocean. Uh, so that's kind of where the branding went. Now, where it gets difficult is what am I actually doing here on on YouTube? I don't do really anything to do with the ocean. I, I do Camtasia tutorials or YouTube tutorials, things like that. So that really doesn't sync up very well. So I'm wondering if maybe at some point uh, the name may change or, or maybe not for the channel, but for um, my main website. I may change that at some point to something that has a little bit more to do with content creation, 
uh, media or, or whatever, create, creating, who knows? I don't know. Maritime creative, maybe something like that. I don't know. <laughs> something I'm toying with. Um, but anyways, just to back up a little bit, uh, I've got some notes here because I've noticed most of my live streams are kind of a little bit all over the place as I get more used to things. So I want to make sure I, I try to get a bit of a flow going and I do things in a certain order. So right off the bat in the introductions, I ask where you guys are from. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I may make some graphics to put on screen just to kind of remind people, you know, as, as you tune in, let me know where you're tuning in from. I'd love to hear it. Also, let me say that uh, as we go through these live streams, if there's any questions you guys have, I love to answer questions. So uh, most of what I do on these live streams uh, are is answering questions that you guys have asked. So whether you've asked them here in this live stream or in a previous live stream or in the comment section of any of my videos. Um, I try to answer all of those uh, if there's questions and whatnot in them. Uh, and if I don't answer with, with like a specific answer as to how to do, if you're asking me how to do something or you'd like to learn how to do a certain thing in Camtasia, um, uh, if, I, if I can't answer it in a little text box in the comments, I'll typically answer here in a live stream. So, and I've got a couple things written down from this past week's comments that uh, just quick little things to show you uh, uh, how to do certain things in Camtasia. Um, so yeah, anything anything that, uh, that you wanna know how to do, uh, if you ask me throughout the week, wherever, comments, live streams, and also these live streams become videos that you can watch afterwards when the live stream is done. You can no longer comment in the chat section but you can ask things in the comment section at that point. So, uh, so yeah, so there we go. So yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. And as I'm demonstrating things uh, here on my screen, if questions pop up, just, just ask me. Um, I'm not always the greatest at catching the comments in a timely fashion, but I always do glance up. I may be 15, 20 minutes late in answering your question, but I will get to them. Um, so yeah, so just checking back to the chat, Pamela Powers is tuning in from California. Hello, Pamela. Welcome back. Uh, in fact, one of the questions you asked, uh, since the last live stream, I've got written down to address here in this live stream. So, um, stick around for that. Um, what's next here? Greg Hyatt says, what's the best way to export audio after you've separated it to edit it in an audio editor, then bring back into the project? Great question. Um, there's actually two ways you can do this. There, there's one way you've kind of alluded to. You can export the, the, the audio. The other way is the audio doesn't have to start in Camtasia at all. You could actually record it outside of Camtasia, do your editing, and then bring it in. Um, and you just bring it in as a WAV file or an MP3 file. Uh, WAV is typically better. Um, but uh, if you already have your um, your audio in Camtasia, let me just uh, let me pop over and change screens here. Um, this is my I'm sharing my screen here. Can you guys? There we go. Yep. Just want to make sure you can see it. We don't need that there. Um, now, one other thing I just want to do is just pop that there just pop the question back on this screen i'll put it up oh, where do i put this right here i suppose um so to export the audio uh this is um uh let me see now this is this is a sample project I have open. Sorry, just losing my train of thought here. Uh, I don't have any audio in this, so let me just quickly drag something in here that has audio, uh, and we'll figure this out together. Um, uh, da, 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 we'll go here. Okay, I'll just bring uh, just bring this in here. Okay, so this is the video I made for my live stream trailer, okay? It has audio in it because this is actually the finished, <laughs> this is the finished file, the exported MP4 uh, file, video file. So all you do is, um, let me just try a couple things. What happens when you do right click? Uh, you can right click and you can separate the video and the audio right here. Um, Okay, so you can't export it though, but if we go up to export, 
export audio only. It's right here. Do you see that there? Export audio only. And then that brings up uh, your, um, your export uh, settings. And you can export the file here. Now, M4A, I'm not that familiar with M4A and what, what that's used for. I usually deal with uh, WAV files. And I also don't do this myself. I don't, um, I don't, I mean, I have when I've gotten uh, uh, projects from other clients that already have audio in them and they want the audio cleaned up, then I have, it's just been a while since I've done that. But I would go down here and I would change this to WAV, export to WAV file. I don't know the difference between WAV and M4A. I know the difference between WAV and MP3. Uh, MP3 is, is um, it's basically, uh, it's a much smaller file and it doesn't have all the information in it that it could. So it's not as, it doesn't re retain as much information. It typically sounds just fine. Um, but if you're still messing around with the audio, you're changing some things and whatnot, I would recommend using the WAV extension. Uh, file size is larger, but but that's I mean, nothing compared to how large video files are. So um, export it to WAVE like this. Okay, I'm not going to bother doing that. But uh, if you do, then now you've got your audio out. You open it up in, you know, WavePad Editor, Adobe Edition, Audacity, whatever program you're going to use to modify the audio. Then you save it in that program, and then you would bring it back in. You just come back to your media bin here. Okay, bring in the audio and drag it down here. Now, before you um, bring it onto this timeline, you're going to want to separate out the audio that, that's already here. And that you would just right click, uh, separate video and audio. There, I created it on two different timelines, right? And then you can simply delete that one. Or if you wanted to save it in your project, you could hide that track. Okay, and then you would use the new audio that you bring, bring back in. Okay, so... Uh, Hopefully that helps. Um, I'm just gonna see one thing. Oh yeah, look at that. So your comment, I've, I've set it up on the screen sharing page and comments go in that corner and then here they're still here. So I'm still getting used to Ecamm and seeing how that, how that all works. So uh, bear with me on that. Um, okay, next up, Brian says, one challenge I have is with audio. Great, I sense a theme here. <laughs> I have a Blue Yeti Nano, um, but I don't use it because it either picks up the fans of my laptop or I have the gain down so much it doesn't pick up my voice well. Okay, um, yeah, there's a couple things we can discuss there. Um, I'm not that familiar with, I'm not that familiar with the Blue Yeti Nano per se. I used to have a Blue Yeti. I don't know if it's still here somewhere. I think something tells me I gave it to my son or my daughter or something. They might have it in at their apartment. Um, but uh, yeah, I used to have one. That was my first mic external microphone that I bought for my PC. Um, right now, I use a shotgun mic and, and there's a reason for that. So if your microphone is picking up noise from around and your, and your computer fan, um, that is an issue. Um, and that might be a function of the type of uh, microphone it is. Right, so again, I'm not that familiar with that microphone, but it, it may be good at picking up everything and all the surroundings. If, if you're gonna stick with that microphone, then um, I guess what you'd have to think about doing is isolating your computer somehow. Can you get it farther away from your, your uh, microphone? Can you put some kind of a, um, uh, like not, maybe not a wall, or could you put it behind a curtain or something like that? I mean, if you're in a, a standard office, maybe that's not possible. Treating your room would help. Like if you had, you ever see those foam? And I used to have some, I've got it in the other room. Um, some foam uh, things that you can put on the wall that would help stop noise from kind of bouncing around in your room. Um, this room here is not that great for sound absorption either. I've got a few things going on. I have curtains on this side, um, which you can see there, I've got curtains right behind me. But as you can see, I've got a lot of monitors. Monitors are flat, hard surfaces, and they're not good for sound because sound will bounce straight off of that and come back, right? So not good. The fact that I have uh, uh, nine foot ceilings is not great. I haven't done anything to the ceiling up there. Just, uh, it's just a regular old 
ceiling of a bedroom. This is a bedroom I've converted to an office. Um, so, so I could hang something like some kind of a curtain or sound absorption blanket there. That would help if you did something like that, that would help. But if, if, I mean, th that could potentially be a lot of work surrounding yourself with curtains or, um, blankets or, or things like that, effectively turning your office into some kind of a sound booth. If you can't really do that, then I recommend a shotgun type mi microphone. And again, I can show you mine. Uh, you can see it just, just up here. That's, that's the microphone I use. Uh, it's a Cinco, what's it called? You see it over here? Is it the word? No, I don't know where. Where is the, it's a S-Y-N-C-O. Where is, I can't, up here? Mike, anyway, I can't find it. <laughs> it's, uh, you may have heard, if, if you've been looking at microphones at all, you may have heard of the uh, Sennheiser MK400 and something. Anyways, it's it's a very popular, very good shotgun mic, but it's like $1,000. So this is basically a knockoff version. Uh, it does a job, it's still not that cheap. I think it was over $300, but... Um, the advantage of a shotgun mic is it only picks up in a, in a small direction. So again, so this, this, I have it just out of frame and it's pointed down basically towards my mouth. Okay. And it'll pick up here, but it won't pick up things to the sides of the mic. Like if I move over here, I'm, I can't tell, but you can confirm that I probably don't sound very good if I'm way up here talking or over on this side, you can't hear me, but if I'm right in front of the mic, it gets much louder. I don't know, did that, did that work, that little demonstration? I can't hear myself in, in the headphones, um, but that'll give you an idea, hopefully it gave you an idea of how a shotgun mic works. Doesn't pick up stuff outside of where it's not pointing to, but only picks up where it's pointing to. Um, uh, but it would still help if you had soft surfaces like curtains or things like that around to stop your voice from kind of bouncing off the flat walls and eventually making it back into the microphone. Okay. Um, does that help? Hopefully that helped. Uh, let me just see. Picks up. So the fans of your laptop. Well, okay. Another thing you could do is, <laughs> um, so I use a MacBook Pro and it is silent, silent, silent. Like, honest to God, I have a desktop computer down here, which is a PC. Um, and when it's on, it's like there's an airplane on, you know, running here in my office. It's loud. But this microphone, this microphone still does not pick that up when it's on. So I love that. The Mac is awesome because the fans stay quiet. And I think generally, um, I haven't used a PC laptop in quite some time. The last one I had also had loud fans. Uh, but again, I've used a shotgun mic with that and it was fine. So shotgun mic might be your answer. Uh, a cheaper way to, to, to try something might be hanging curtains or, or even clothes or whatever around you. Um, maybe try to hang some blankets or clothes between you and the computer or between your mic and the computer. That might help. Um, anyways, hopefully some of those ideas, uh, help somewhat and good luck with that. Um, okay. Let me just, uh, keep going with some of these comments. Uh, Greg Childers. Hi, Rob. It's Greg from New Jersey. Hi, Greg. Welcome. Uh, a name I don't recognize. So perhaps you're new. If so, welcome aboard. <laughs> Thanks for joining the live stream. Feel free to ask any questions if, uh, if you'd like, and uh, I will answer them in due time. I, again, I'm not great at, so I'm about eight questions behind right now, or eight comments behind, but once I get a good question and I can just go off on a ta tangent, I can talk for, uh, for quite a while, sometimes to a fault, but uh, <laughs> feel free to ask. Uh, Greg Hyatt says uh, uh, to Brian, you might wanna check out Rhodes NT-USB Mini, it's amazing. Okay, I'm not familiar with that one either. Um, uh, it's also a USB mic. Yes, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, um, yeah, and, and the, uh, the Blue Yeti that I used to have also was a USB mic. USBs are much easier to plug into your computer um, because uh, you just plug in via USB. This mic here uses a, um, an XLR cable 
as do most shotgun mics, I think. And when you go that way, you need an audio interface as well. Um, and the one I'm using is over there. That, that red thing there, the Focusrite 2i2 is what it's called. And here's the mic plugged in right here. And then you change your levels and, and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, a, li a little added expense, uh, probably a couple hundred dollars. You could probably get a, get one for less than 200, but, or you could spend a lot of money on an audio interface. Um, all depending on what you want to plug into it. If you just want to plug in one mic, then, uh, uh, you know, you don't have to spend that much. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, check out that, uh, the Rode NT USB mini. I'll, uh, I'll check that out too. Just see what, uh, what that's all about. But uh, USB, um, mic might be the answer. Okay. Let me see. Renee Rosendahl. Hi, Rob. I have used the day working with your flow arrow. I really love it. Thanks. Awesome. Renee. Actually, I believe you're the one that asked how to do that. And I was a couple weeks late in figuring it out, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So what Renee is talking about is the video that, uh, well, I showed how to do it in my live stream last Tuesday, I think it was. And then uh, the video that I released yesterday uh, was on how to do it. So basically how to create flowing lines in a flow chart or, or arrows that are, are static on screen, but appear to be moving. Uh, and I showed how to do that in the video that I released yesterday. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's pretty cool. It uses the media mat and uh, some animation. Um, and actually I'm going to get into one of the things I wanted to talk about today is um, looking back at that video I made yesterday, I didn't take it as far as I probably should have. Uh, the one thing that I didn't do is, well, what, so I, the, what I did was I made lines that lasted for about five seconds. Well, what if you wanted it longer? What if you wanted it for five minutes? You know what I mean? So I'm going to address that in uh, later on today when I get to that part of today's show. So stick around for that. Um, Greg says, WMA is a Windows Media Audio only file. Wave or MP3 are the preferred audio formats. Okay, WMA. I'm not I'm not that familiar with that either, but certainly Wave and MP3 are the ones that that uh, that I'm most familiar with. And again, Wave files are the ones that I I typically try to use. Um, not that I'm an expert in audio files, but in everything that I've seen in videos and read, the Wave files tend to be basically the lossless version of of an audio file, whereas MP3 is like you've are you know it's already been compressed, so to speak. Um, that might not be exactly accurate, but that's the way I look at it. Um, Greg says, hi, Rob. Uh, looks like you're seeing early comments from previous stream you've done. That looks like you're seeing early comments from previous stream you've done That's that was displayed. Um, really? Uh, maybe... Uh, uh, I don't, uh, I haven't noticed that, um, but maybe, yeah, no, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. Um, uh, but yeah, if there are other, uh, comments that get in here, that would be kind of strange, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, Greg says, depends if you're worried about your mic being visible in your videos, but you can also purchase a clip on screen that goes behind the mic to help reduce the noise. Use a Rode or Shure mic. Okay, very good. Yeah, a clip-on screen. I think I know what you're referring to. And I, when I first started in this, I got one of those. Basically, a, it was a curved um, piece of metal that on the inside had the foam triangles. And that kind of wrapped around the microphone. And the idea was that you speaking into that, your voice um, will get absorbed by that. It won't bounce up. Like for instance, here, you may hear a bit of reverb or echo in my voice, probably because it's bouncing off these flat monitors. Right. Um, but yeah, if you're speaking into something that has like the foam and different angles and all that stuff, then it won't bounce straight back to you. It'll hopefully bounce in a different direction and get absorbed by the foam. Like, I think that's kind of the, um, uh, the idea, the, the philosophy, I guess the way it works. Um, again, I'm no expert in that. Just, uh, I've, I've read enough and seen enough YouTube videos, uh, 
I know enough to be dangerous, let's put it that way, <laughs> but not enough to call myself an expert. Uh, Brian says, those were great tips. Thank you. No problem. Good luck with it. Let me know how you make out, actually. That'd be, uh, that'd be good to know. Um, Greg Childers says, uh, Childers or Childers? Hopefully I'm, I'm saying your name, your name right. Sorry if I'm not. Uh, hi, Rob. Is there a way to be sure that you're you recording if you're using Bluetooth headphones during the recording? I have recorded sometimes and had no audio output using headphones. Um, that's interesting. Um, I've had a similar uh, problem in that with these live streams. When I start a live stream, sometimes there's, there have been live streams where I've been talking for like a couple minutes before I realized some people, you guys may say through the chat, Rob, we can't hear you. <laughs> it's like, oh crap. So, so yeah, you can't typically, so these headphones here, I'm not hearing myself speak. What these are for are for um, my screen. Like if I'm playing a video in Camtasia, say, and it has audio or in YouTube, uh, then I'll be able to hear that audio here. Um, the only thing I can suggest for you is you need some visual way to know that you're recording. Uh, because I do my audio recordings outside of Camtasia, even if I'm recording Camtasia, right? If I have, if I have pressed record in Camtasia and I'm capturing a screen, if I'm also speaking and I'm capturing my voice through this microphone, the way I do it is, yes, Camtasia is, is picking it up as well, but I open Adobe Audition, another, an outside program. Uh, and you can use Audition or you can use um, Audacity as a free one, or you can use WavePad Editor, which is cheaper than Adobe Audition. Anything like that. I open it up, put it on another monitor, not the one that you're capturing on, so you don't capture it, um, and then hit record. And then you can hit record on that and then record your screen. And what you'll notice is you'll be able to see the waveforms of your audio, the audio waveforms on the monitor. You'll be able to see them talking. So for example, right now I am, I don't have Adobe Edition open, which means some live streams I have had it open and I've recorded my live streams on Edition as well. But today I'm not. Um, this is getting picked up by YouTube and then YouTube will put out the video afterwards. But let me just open Edition just so you know what's going on. Um, I'll open this up and I will bring it down here so that you guys can see it. Let me move this comment here. So this is Adobe Edition and I'm going to go control shift N just to start a new uh, file. I'll type in test enter. So here is Adobe Edition. So I can just have that open on any other monitor, right? And if I go down and hit record, well, first I would want to check my audio settings. Now there's no reason to believe that they, they wouldn't be set correctly, but if I go audio hardware, I can see that the default input is set to the Scarlett 2i2 USB. That's the audio interface I, I showed you here, the red box to the left of me um, that my microphone is plugged into. So that is set as my default input, so that's good. And now if I wanted to record myself, I'll just hit this record button here, and now I'm recording. And you can see that I'm recording, or I can see that I'm recording because the waveforms are showing up, right? Right, you can see the, the waveforms. And then, so you just put that up in a top corner of another monitor, uh, if you have a, a second monitor uh, that you're not recording from, and you'll be able to tell that um, you are recording. Does that make sense? So as long as the, if you're trying to record into Camtasia, right, um, you can record into Audition at the same time. And this is the way I do it. I record into Audition and Camtasia at the same time. And then that's why I don't even have to export my audio from Camtasia because I already have an exported copy here in Audition. So I would just stop it here, right? And then, I mean, you can hear, sorry. Can you hear that? So that's the recording I captured. And then I would run that through my, uh, so I've got a, a bunch of presets called Rob Voice 2021. It's been three years since I set up these presets, but I just click that and boom, the magic happens and it makes it sound better. Okay, so now that's processed audio. I save that and then I bring that into Camtasia and I replace the 
what Camtasia recorded with this recording. Does that make sense? So, so basically that, I just wanted to, to demonstrate how you can see if you're recording. Now, for me doing this live stream, and this is all part of me getting used to using Ecamm Live, the new Mac-based software that I use to go live, um, there is something, and maybe I can show you this. If I show you my, I'll switch over to my iPhone, and is this, so if you see here, right down here, this says sound levels. I don't know if you can see that, sound levels. And it says Scarlett 2i2 USB. That's my, yeah, I don't think that's focusing. Anyways, see the green bar moving back and forth? That's because, that's showing me that my audio is being captured by my audio interface, okay? So I just have to get used to checking that as long as that is showing the green bar going back and forth, you guys should be hearing my audio fine. So that's something else. If so, so yeah, so if you're capturing your audio with Camtasia, with Audition, those are visual ways. If you're capturing it with OBS, for example, same thing, you can tell if by the audio um, if, if the capturing is working or not. So hopefully that helps. Again, another long-winded answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> Greg says, thanks. So hopefully that, uh, that was eight minutes ago. God, I, I spent eight minutes answering your question. I hope, I hope it helps. <laughs> Greg says, you can get shotgun mics in USB, just a little more than XLR without having to purchase the focus right. Okay, I didn't know that. Very good. Um, good to know. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different types of microphones. Um, in fact, most people who do voiceover don't use shotgun mics, but some do. And uh, I do. I I... I offer a voiceover as a gig on Fiverr, my, in my Fiverr account, and I also use it to uh, do voiceovers for the tutorials and the videos that I make uh, for clients through Fiverr as well, and for my own videos. So it's just that when I'm doing live streams, I typically put it up out of frame, and that's why it's, you know, um, I may not be as loud, or I may not be as clear the audio may not be as good as it would be if it was right up to my mouth. So if I'm going to do a voiceover that has to be really good, then I will turn my levels down and bring the mic really close to my mouth. I'll put this little pop filter on it. Uh, yeah, and then it does a great job. It doesn't add any echo. But the further away I put it, I mean, I can get really far away uh, and to help, to help, boost my voice, I could turn the level up here, right? So I'm probably louder, but you're probably hearing more noise in the room too. So I'll dial that back down and get closer. And if I need to get even closer, I'll dial it down more. Then I get, can get, then I can get closer and you can, I probably sound better. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, just a couple demonstrations. Hopefully that helps. Okay. Where are we? Now, da, 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 da. Uh, you can get shotgun. Okay, Greg says uh, exactly about the mic wrap around as you described. Okay, perfect, good. I'm glad that worked. <laughs> uh, Greg says it's okay, perfect. Um, and Greg Hyatt says uh, you have you checked to ensure that your machine has your Bluetooth headset set for both the mic and speakers as default? Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. Um, I've never used a combo uh, uh, microphone and headset. I've, I've often thought, well, I guess actually that's what these are. This has a microphone. Um, and actually, if you go back, I think it's three live streams ago, maybe it was two live streams ago last week. Um, I did the whole live stream. I didn't even realize it, but this mic wasn't even on. And so what you're hearing was through the microphone here in these AirPods. Um, so that was an example of me. I, I never checked to see how I was set up. So uh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Here we go. Yes, Greg, I was really referring to system audio. Okay. Okay. And now we have learning and technology with Frank. Hello from Calgary. Hey, Frank, fellow Canadian. Very good. Um, thanks for stopping in and good to see you again. I believe you've stopped in before. Um, hope I haven't missed too much of the party. 
No, we're just getting going, Frank. <laughs> You're just in time. <laughs> we're still going through kind of the intro part of it. And we talked a little bit about last week's stream and I'm just answering questions. If anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead and ask and I will answer to the best of my ability. <laughs> Greg says, welcome, Frank. We have a friendly bunch in here, don't we? Isn't that great? Frank says, I use Sennheiser G4 mics, but they are not cheap. Very good. Yes, Sennheiser. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the G4, uh, but I certainly know the name and uh, they are, uh, that's, a, that's a good company for sure. As I was saying before, actually, Frank, um, I use a Cinco shotgun mic, kind of like a knockoff of the Sennheiser, I want to say it's called the Mark IV or something like that, that a lot of YouTubers use um, uh, when they want it out of frame. Uh, very expensive. I think that one is north of $1,000 Canadian, <laughs> uh, whereas this one was 300 ish um, And I think it sounds fine. And I use it for voiceover. It may not be the perfect voiceover, but it's perfect enough that I get clients, <laughs> put it that way. Um, Square Egg, I better say hello too. Been sat here watching. Louise from Leeds in the UK. Welcome, Louise. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, Square Egg, I can call you Louise now. I've been calling you Square Egg in the past. <laughs> so welcome. Thanks for stopping in. Hope you're doing well. And Greg says, hey, Square Egg. Very good. I'm caught up. I'm caught up with the chats, but again, feel free to uh, mention anything, uh, ask any questions you like. But for now, that's it for the chats. Let me get into, let's take a look at what's next. Let's see, Frank says they are wireless, wireless packs. So you get a lot of distance, 100 meters, and can transmit. The G4s are in the $800 Canadian range. Okay, very good. So $800 Canadian is like 600, 625 or so US. Um, not cheap, but wireless is cool. I've, I've considered wireless. Um, wireless would be good. For example, if I was live streaming and I wanted to get up and walk around while I'm live, live streaming, if I walk away from this mic, my audio would disappear. But if I had a wireless mic, you know, clipped here, um, then that's when uh, they would be great. And if it can go 100 meters, um, that's awesome. You can, do, you can do that outside. Perfect. Um, okay, so what is next? So last week's stream, just a, a quick little recap. Um, so last, so again, I streamed on Thursday as well as Tuesday. Uh, not everybody may know that. Um, and Thursday we talked about the media mat. I got, I went in a little more detail in how that works. And then I, I used that when I create, when in the video that I released, uh, yesterday in how to create the flowing lines in a flow chart. Okay. That used the media mat. We also talked about custom brush transitions. So if you're interested in, so again, um, what we talked about last week, Camtasia has a lot of, um, transitions available to you. Uh, but sometimes there are, uh, you want something unique, something that you can't find in Camtasia. Camtasia may not have the type of transition you want. Well, last Friday, I came out with a video that, that, uh, walked you through or a tutorial on how to create a custom angled wipe or blinds, uh, transition. And I, three variations of that were in that video. Um, but the day before that Thursday, when I went live, I talked about how to download some black and white, uh, transitions and then use the media mat to turn them into transitions. So that was, uh, that's what I had written down here. So if you're interested in that, check out last Friday's video. Um, and it was called, uh, what was it called? Three custom Camtasia transitions it was Friday. And then the Thursday live stream. Um, I talked about the custom brush transitions. Um, and then Tuesday's live stream, we talked about the animated flowing lines, the 3D lighting and shadows, which was a kind of a cool video that I released last week, and the hologram. Um, I'm going to make that into a video as to how to create a hologram uh, and then show yourself basically, you know, swiping up and down on a screen, like make like you are, and then um, uh, put the screen on an angle in 3d space, slightly see-through and glowing. Uh, and that's pretty cool too. So, 
Uh, if you want to check out last Tuesday's live stream, you can see how I did that. Or in the next week or so, um, I will come out with a video that'll be more condensed so you don't have to go searching through the two hour live stream. <laughs> uh, I'm, gonna, I'm guessing maybe a 10 minute video or so where I show you how to do that effect. So that, that was kind of cool. Um, so the, the latest, uh, oh, and so what's coming up, where am I, am I? Latest videos, animated flow charts, we talked about that, uh, came out yesterday, 3D lights and shadows, came out last week, uh, and the hologram. Um, upcoming videos, uh, there's two, two in the, in the, in the hopper right now. Uh, the next one to come out is tomorrow and that's on Google drive. It's, it's a little bit getting away from Camtasia, but more speaking to video editors, or if you have clients that you have to send these videos to that you're making in Camtasia, <laughs> um, large files, Google drive is a great way to send files, uh, to your clients or your family or whoever you're sending them to. Um, and the video. Tomorrow is just a short, I think it's four minutes, if that, uh, shows you how to use Google Drive to transfer files, um, even if the person you're sending to doesn't have Google Drive. So that is kind of cool. I use that basically every day. So I have a Google Drive account that allows me 200 gigs of space. I think you can get, what is it, five gigs for free? Um, but if you need more space than that, and I do, um, uh, you, you pay, I don't know what it is, 30 or $40 a year. Um, for the more space and then you can send it, you basically put it up in the cloud and then send a link to your, your clients. Um, next up, and I'm working on this right now, is keyboard shortcuts in Camtasia. There's a lot of shortcuts that I use that make my editing go faster. Um, there's a lot more keyboard shortcuts in Camtasia that I don't use. And I'm kind of learning about those and there's been a couple of aha moments that, uh, oh wow, I never knew you could do that, that's great. So um, I'm gonna share my favorite ones with you guys and also some other really good ones that I think you guys um, uh, may find useful. So working on a video on that. Uh, and then just kind of very quickly, the next few videos are gonna be Media Matte. I'm gonna go more in depth in that and we'll, We'll talk about uh, um, you know the luminosity, alpha, alpha inverted, luminosity inverted, and what all of them do. We kind of went, went through that last week in one of the live streams, um, but I'm gonna condense that and create a video about that. I'm gonna make a video about the hologram. Motion path is another cool thing with animations. Uh, I think it was added last year in the 2023 version, or it might've even been 2022. Um, I'm gonna do a video on that, and then the custom brush transitions, and TikTok style captions. Um, I, I discovered something just in the last couple days that uh, I didn't know you could do in Camtasia, and I'm gonna show you what that is before I leave today. And if you know, you know, if you don't, you're gonna love it. it well, maybe, if that's the kind of video. If you wanna make vertical type reel or TikTok or, or shorts, YouTube shorts videos, and you want the you know the captions to look a little more stylized than you think you can do, I've got a, a neat trick to show you. So um, yeah, so that's what's coming up. So now let me take a quick another look at the chat. Um, oh, we already did that one, wireless packs. That's the wireless microphones. Um, Greg Hyatt says, Rode has an awesome wireless lav. Uh, Rode does, uh, DJI also does. I think DJI's are quite expensive though, like several hundred dollars, three or four hundred dollars, I think. Um, but uh, they, I think Rode's, I think it's called the Wireless Go 2, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then the DJI, I don't know what they're called, but both versions come with uh, one receiver and two transmitters. So you could basically, you could have two different people wearing microphones that both transmit back to the transmitter. If you're doing say an interview, for example, um, uh, I hear good things about them. I don't, I've never tried them myself, but, uh, I hear good things about them. Uh, Frank says, uh, you did a great job on the media mat. It demonstrated, but also sparks ideas. Great job. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Um, and I'm glad it did. A and, one thing I've been thinking about, so there's a lot you can do in Camtasia. There's a lot of tools. Um, 
But the tools are only as good as the idea you have before you use it, if that makes sense. Um, like the tool's not gonna do everything for you. You have to use these tools in certain ways to achieve what you want. And that's that's kind of what I'm learning as I dive deeper. I'm diving deeper into Camtasia than I really ever have before so that I can make these videos for you guys. Um, they're not things that I've ever necessarily made. Like the, the flowing lines and the flow charts, I've never used that myself, but because I've never really made a flow chart type um, video, or I've never needed that in a video, but I can certainly think now, oh wait, I might be able to use that in, in the future. So yeah, there, with all of these things, if I can spark some other ideas that pop into your head, different ways you can use all these tools, then awesome. And uh, feel free to share uh, what, you might, what you might come up with. Maybe I'll do a contest at some point where you guys can somehow submit what you've done in Camtasia and we'll have a contest or, or something. I'll give something away. <laughs> Just thought of that off the top of my head. That, that would probably be more of a website driven thing. And maybe we could run that through YouTube. Who knows? I'd have to have a way for you guys to submit them to me. And then anyway, something to think about down the future <laughs> um, or down, yeah, down in the, uh, off in the future. Uh, Learning in Tech with Frank says, you can spend a lot of money on sound. I've tried a lot of solutions. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, I've spent a lot of money too, and there's a lot of things that I have that I don't use. <laughs> but uh, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> um, a lot of rabbit holes you can go down with this. Uh, one, thing, um, one thing that I've heard and that I, I tend to definitely agree as a YouTube consumer as well. So watching videos, don't underestimate the importance of audio, of good audio or bad audio, really the importance of it. Um, you can make an awesome video, but if it's got poor audio, uh, people may not want to watch it. They won't stick around. Uh, people are, are not very forgiving when it comes to the audio. So if the, if the audio sounds like you've recorded something in a tunnel and it's just horrible, but you have great content video wise, um, that may not be enough to keep the viewer, right? Whereas great audio has been known to keep people watching, even if the content is subpar. Great audio can make a video look better than it is, if that makes sense. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Audio is super important. So you want to spend some time on, on, uh, on uh, uh, getting the best possible audio that you can. Uh, Greg Hyatt says, I can tolerate bad video, but not poor audio. Exactly, <laughs> same here, <laughs> same here. Um, and it's unfortunate sometimes, like when I see a video, then the audio sounds sounds crappy. Um, you know, sometimes you can only hear, like if there's a, a tinny sound or anything, right? And there's not much, it doesn't take much to make Bad, I mean, you sometimes you can't fix really bad audio, but there are things you can do to fix audio somewhat, make it sound somewhat better. But um, the best piece of advice I can give to get the best audio you can is spend some time on the room. Good room treatment uh, can make a world of difference, much more so than going from a $200 mic to a $1,000 mic, right? The difference there may be, may be kind of small, whereas if you're going from a big empty room with no furniture in it, that's gonna be echo is, right? Crazy echoey um, to a, if you, I mean, some people do voiceovers in their closets full of hanging clothes. They'll go into a walk-in closet, shut the door with their microphone and they'll record in there, right? And if, even if it's a bad microphone, the audio treatment of the room closet, uh, saves it. And, and, uh, and then you can do your processing if you want to, maybe you don't even have to, but you could put it into audacity or, or, uh, audition and, uh, you know, play with the equalizing and, and make it sound even better. Right. Um, so yeah, spend some time with the audio if you can, <laughs> um, learning with, uh, Frank says 100%. And then he says, you would love using text Smith's Audiate, I think. Maybe that's a video idea. That is a video idea. Um, I actually haven't used it. 
Uh, I know what it is. Oh, well, I can't speak uh, that much to it. I don't know. I don't think I know everything that it can do, but I do know uh, one of their selling points in Audiate is that you can basically edit your video by editing the audio, right? That's my understanding. You can you can see a transcript of what's in your video that audio Audiate generates. For those who, of you who don't know, Audiate is an audio editing program made by TechSmith, the makers of Camtasia and Snagit and a few other things. Um, but I haven't, I haven't myself used Audiate, but I do know that you can, like with the transcript you can generate in Audiate, you can then basically highlight some words and delete them and it'll automatically delete that section of the video in Camtasia. Do I have that right? Um, that's my understanding, one of the things you can do with it. Some people may love that. Um, I don't necessarily see it being something that I would like because I tend to, like when I do cuts in my video, I, I tend to play with it a lot. Like I'll, uh, I may want to add a, a, an L cut or a J cut, right? I may want the, uh, the video portion to last a little bit longer before the audio portion of the next clip cuts in, for example, right? Things like that that I don't know that Audiate handle. Maybe it does, and I just don't know. Um, but uh, it is something that at some point when I, I've got an awful long list of other ideas at first that I want to get through first, but uh, definitely I'd be open to looking more into Audiate and, and creating videos on that. Um, uh, Greg says, basic sound treatment is the basis of better audio. Even if you use tools like Audition, without proper sound isolation, the tools have to overcompensate. That's a great way to put it. Um, I have used, Audi and Audition is one of the best, if not the best that I've heard of, uh, audio processing programs by Adobe. Um, in fact, it does a way more than I know how to do. I just know my little section of Audition, <laughs> how to create voiceovers and how to do a few little things here and there. I have not gotten into their mixing capabilities or all kinds of other things. Um, but I do know that if, if I record in a bad room and there's a bunch of echo, and even before when I used a cheap, like the first mic I ever got and, and the audio didn't sound great, if I tried to use their noise removal in Audition, um, it'll remove some things. But uh, uh, if there's a lot of noise and you're trying to remove the noise, it, it will start removing things, but it'll also start removing some of your voice to a point where it's not going to sound good if you remove all the voice. If you remove all the noise, it will have removed enough of your voice as well that your voice doesn't sound good anymore, right? So uh, definitely, if you can start with a well-treated room, um, that's 90% of the battle right there. Um, then you can... And again, uh, some people may not even process their audio after that. If they record themselves in a decent room, that's probably good enough in a lot of cases, right? Unless you're doing, maybe if you're doing voiceover work that's just voiceover uh, and, and uh, uh, it's for a client and they want it to be crisp and clear and all that, um, then, uh, then it's a little more important. Um, and Learning with Frank says, it's pretty cool. You are correct on the features. It's quite powerful from what I've used. Uh, Audiate. Audiate is quite powerful. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, at some point I'll get a little bit more into it, um, but uh, it's kind of on the back burner for me now. But hey, if a couple more people want to, to know more about it, chime in and let me know and, and maybe we push it further or closer to the top. <laughs> um, here we go. Square Egg. Luis says, I use Audiate. It's super simple and quick to edit audio. And yes, it's like editing a script. Auto remove, hums and errs, pauses, etc. It now generates scripts based on a topic and use AI to read them. Okay, very good. Yeah, man, AI, AI is everywhere now, isn't it? <laughs> um, it can do a lot of different things. That's cool. You use it too. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, at some point I need to uh, I need to take a closer look at that. Uh, Pamela Power says Audiate seems to be more expensive than Camtasia. Is it? I'm not I'm not even 100% sure. Um, and I don't even know if I'll be able to tell by by looking at uh, uh, No, that's if I just go to TechSmith. Let's bring this down here. 
You guys see that? That's TechSmith's homepage. And yeah, Audiate is more expensive. I, I'm, yeah, too, so this is showing Canadian dollars. So uh, um, for those in the United States, one Canadian dollar is around 76, 78 cents US. Uh, so this 273 may be 225 US, roughly, 200. Um, yeah, it's more. They must offer, I'm sure they offer a package where you can get uh, both of them. Snagit's another one of their popular ones. And I used to use that. I don't so much now um, because I just use uh, in the Mac, uh, Control Shift 3. <laughs> Boom. Screenshot. And I've got four monitors going. It'll take screenshots of all four monitors and I get to choose which one I want to keep. So that's all I use Snagit for. I know you can make some videos in Snagit as well and it's good for sharing videos and things like that. Um, just a, not exactly what, uh, what I use it for. Um, uh, Learning with Frank says it's subscription based and does add up. Okay. Very good. Uh, sadly, no package that I know of. Okay. Um, uh, and Square Egg says you can do an ad hoc monthly subscription good for specific projects. Okay. That's a good idea. If you just need it for a short time, uh, you can do it that way. Sure. Um, very good. Yeah. So Audiate. Yeah. I think they, what are they, about two years into that? I think I first noticed it maybe last year, maybe the year before. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, again, not something, not something I have used myself. Uh, let me just put this back uh, out of the way. Okay. All right. How are we doing for time? Where are we at? Just about three o'clock here in Atlantic Canada. How's everyone doing? Are we doing all right for time? I haven't even gotten to the point where I've written down what we're going to talk about today. I mean, we talked about some of these, some of these things already, but um, uh, they're also so. A lot of times, what I use these uh, uh, live streams for is uh, to go over videos I've made. If you want to want me to expand on them a little bit but also to kind of, I guess, foreshadow <laughs> what's coming. Um, so what I've got written down here for today is uh, flowing arrows, playhead, and keyboard shortcuts. Um, let me go to the, uh, uh, let me go to the, uh, da, 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 da. oh wait, first of all, let me just pop this up here. Greg says nothing but time. Take Taking a much needed break from a very large website design project that will be the death of me. LOL. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Don't you hate those? Love hate relationship, I suppose. Big jobs mean hopefully a bigger paycheck, <laughs> but uh, can be a pain sometimes. Um, all right. So what, let's hit the flowing arrows first. So let me uh, pop up my screen again. Let's delete that. And that, um, let me bring up, let's go to that video that I just, so this is to do with the video I released yesterday, the flowing, the flow chart, uh, animated lines. Okay. So my projects, uh, here it is. And I'll open up, not, not the, the Camtasia project of the video I released, but of the sample project I did in the video. And that's what this is here. Um, sorry, Frank, I'll remove your comment. <laughs> now, so if you watch that video, I explained how we made these with media mats. And so we'll back this up here and I'll just press space bar. Okay. But after three seconds or so it disappeared because that's as long as I made it. Okay. Um, now, each of these was a line, if, if you recall. We can take a peek inside. Let me just uh, come back here. Yeah, so this, this group here, this was the four. We can hit this plus right here by group one. You guys can see what I'm doing here. Yep. Hit that plus and you can see the things that are inside the group. So main timeline is shown here. Inside group one that I clicked to open is here. So we have those four blocks make up 
what's in this group, okay? That's how you look at what's in a group without ungrouping them. You could also ungroup them, just right click and go ungroup and it expands them, okay? Um, now I'm gonna control Z to go backwards. Now these four things are the four lines. Here, I'll put the playhead over them so you can see. So this, and again, let's, let's click inside one of the groups so you can see what's in there. You have um, the arrow call out, you have the track uh, or the, the shape, and uh, the arrow head was the top part, okay? Now, what I wanted to show you is if you want this to last, if this is what you've made, okay, and you want it to last longer, um, copy these, control, and you can even, I mean, you could group these groups, right? Right click, group, there, now you've made all the lines in that one group. If you want it to last longer, duplicate, duplicate all of that and put that here and just see what it looks like. And we got, we got kind of lucky, there was no stutter. So just keep, so what I'm doing is control C, control V. So copy, paste, okay? You can either do it that way or you can go control D, which is duplicate, okay? It duplicates it. And if you want this to go, like, so we've duplicated it three times. We're still not at 15 seconds. You can start grabbing a bunch of them, right? Control D, duplicate all of them. Now we've kind of doubled it up, right? And you can keep going. You can highlight all of them, Control D, duplicate, right? And now we've got this very long, and it'll go on for almost a minute now, right? Longer than those boxes. <laughs> Okay, so that's one way to make it last longer once you've got your animation built. Now, if you don't wanna deal with all those, I'm just control Zing all the way back. Okay, all the way back to here. If you don't wanna deal with all that, then, then you would want to build, so if you know your flow chart is gonna be on screen for, I don't know, three minutes, right? Well, another way you can you can make this bigger is when you're creating it from the beginning. So let me just ungroup this, okay? Um, and now let's work with let's just work with one of uh, let's work with one that has an arrowhead. Let's duplicate that one. So this what I just created is a duplication of that one. No, that's not the one I wanted. Let's delete that. Not that one. All right, let's do that one. Duplicate that one. Oh, what's going on here? Yeah, that one. So control C, control V. There we go. I don't know why control D was duplicating the one above it and not uh, the one that I was highlighting. Um, so let's ungroup this. So we're working with this little line here. Now you can see that it was uh, it was longer because we we animated it right. So that was the animation, and if I just Control C to back that up, the reason you're only seeing it this long is because I cropped it, right? Um, whoops. If you Control Z back too far, Control Shift Z is redo, not undo. Okay. Just, just so you know. And any of these shortcuts you can find, you could probably find up here. Yeah, undo, paste, control Z, or command Z. Redo is shift, command Z or Z. Okay. Um, incidentally, just a little tidbit of information here. When I say control C for copy, that is PC speak. <laughs> On a Mac, it's typically command C, okay? Um, now I've done something, so I was almost 20 years or yeah, more than that, working on a PC and I've only been a year switched over to a Mac. Because I was 20 years using control, 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 the muscle memory, I had a hard time switching to command. Command is just different place. You gotta put your finger to go. And I use control C, like copy, paste, copy, paste all the time or control X, cut, right? Um, so what I did in my Mac, I actually remapped. I switched my control and my command keys. Okay, so I can still can control Z. <laughs> uh, 
um, on my Mac, even though that's the PC. So anyways, that's a, that's a tangent. That's just something I did. Um, now, let me go back here. So let's right click this and we will ungroup all of this. So now we can see, and let's go back up to this crop. We can see how long that was. Okay, and you can see how it works, right? This is the animation. That's our line. This is the shape that we added the media mat to, which is here. Okay, and it's set to alpha. And then this is the arrowhead that we brought back. So if you want to make this arrow, uh, if you want this to be to occur for a longer period of time, and I just noticed something pop up here. U UB James, hi Rob, good to hear. Good to be here with you. Welcome UB, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right and thanks for stopping by. Hope you get some valuable information from this. Um, uh, so yeah, so what I was gonna say is, Sorry, I'm taking a long time to get around to this. If we, let's zoom out so we can see all of this. We want this to occur for a longer period of time. We may have to make this longer. This looks pretty long already. We have a lot of room to deal with. So let's just zoom this like this. Let's stretch this out, right? And now we'll just stretch out our animation. And now, because we stretch the animation, it's going to occur a lot slower, right? See, that's very slow. So now you may want to speed up. I'm going to hold down Shift as I drag. The, oh, wait, now let's put it back onto uh, select mode. Um, hold down Shift. Right now, what am I doing? I just keep trying a couple things and I control Z to go backwards. I want to take my canvas snapping off. That's causing me a bit of grief here. If I hold down shift, I should be able to move. Oh, that moves everything. We want that to stay there. Okay, so let's take this arrowhead. We're not going to worry about that arrowhead right now. I basically want to make this media mat occur for longer. Okay, let's go right to the end. And I want the animation to occur for longer as well. Okay, and this is the finish point of the animation. If I click and move it, holding down shift, is that going to work? No. No, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. The point I'm trying to make is um, it may be easier to create your animation. Let, let me just start over, right? Let's start over. You can see me do this from the beginning. Okay, I backed right up here. Let's take this arrow. And I want to make this longer. Okay, and I want to make it really long. So I'm going to go right off the screen. Having a little bit of trouble here. Really long. Okay. Now pull it back. Shift C. No, Control C. No. There we go. Alt C. Come on, let's go. I am having a hard time here. What's going on? Here we go. 
So I've got a really long arrow now, okay? So now I'm gonna zoom in. I'll grab my shape. Annotations. Uh, go find a square shape here and we'll block out everything but the arrowhead. And I, I just zoomed way out so I could find out where the end of the arrow was. Although, wait, no, 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 I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I only want it, I only want to map out, like, uh, mask away the part that, uh, uh, that I'm going to be showing, right? So with that there, we'll drag our media mat down to that. Visual effects, locate the media mat which is right here. We'll bring that onto the shape. There we go. So now we have our mask. And if I select both of these, I can bring them down to where I'm going to want them. Okay. Now, now I want to animate this. So we'll, so this is where we're starting from. This is our starting point. Most of the arrow is off to the back, uh, to the left. So we'll go up to animations, bring a custom animation down to the line. And we're going to stretch this out and we'll stretch this out as well. So now we have this going 25 seconds or so. If we want to make it really long, we can do that. Okay, that's, that's about a minute, I believe. Stretch all of this, and we'll stretch this as well. Let's just get an idea for what the speed of the line moving will be. Oh, we haven't, we, sorry, we didn't move the line yet. So with that selected, we're gonna hold down shift and grab the line. No, that's not what I wanted to, oh, this is in the way. Let's move this out of the way. That's the issue I was having. Whenever I tried to grab the line, I was grabbing the medium mat or the shape above it. So now with nothing above the line, I should be able to grab it and, uh, and move it. So I will hold shift down, grab this line and move it. And I've, because it's so long, I've got to move it uh, a couple times, whoops. We want to move it a little bit farther. Hold shift. There, that's probably good. Okay, we'll zoom back in. Now let's put this media mat back where it belongs. We'll take this right to the end. Let's see what kind of speed we have now. Okay, if that's too slow, then again, shorten it down like this and check the speed. Okay. The bottom line is the two ways that you can make these lines last longer is number one, copying and pasting the line multiple times as long as you need it to last. And then you can group the whole thing into your, your line, right? Um, or you make the line really long and, and animate it over that, you know, the whole thing into the media mat. Okay, so now that, that's quite a bit longer than they were at the beginning, right? In the beginning, they were only this long here. Now it's much longer. And again, um, you can see I don't have the line lined up. I've got it going into this box a little bit. The way to fix that is you just go up to crop here and we'll crop this away like that. Okay, that fixes that. Now if you wanna bring the arrowhead back, Let's grab our shape, copy, paste. Let's get rid of most of what's in here. We'll get rid of the animation. Um, uh, and we don't need it near as long. OK. 
Okay, it's way too long. Got this way over here. Can I grab that? Okay. Let's put this on top. We're just dealing with the arrow head now. Make that nice and short. We want to make sure it's it's horizontal. Okay, holding shift, bring this back. Okay, now we'll bring this down and put it right there. And you you can play around with it to make sure it uh, it's exactly where you need it to be. Make sure it occurs over the same length of time. And there you go. Cool. There you go. Um, let me see now. So that's it. That's how to make your flow lines longer one way. And again, you can group all these three things, right? Right click them after they're highlighted, group. And now with it highlighted, control D to duplicate it. And now you don't have to make as many copies as you would have had to before. Okay. Uh, there's some weird things going on with the, I didn't have, I must not have had shift pressed down when I made, when I, uh, when I did the motion, uh, so it's not lining up perfectly like it did in the video. So watch the video I released yesterday as well. Um, and that'll take you through the first part of this. Okay. And now with that in conjunction with what I just showed you here, um, that should give you enough ideas uh, for your own use case, hopefully, anyways. Okay, um, so that was that. Um, let me just get caught up here. Got a couple of messages. Uh, Pamela Powers said, I had bought a renewed Mac in Amazon and it had a nice uh, Logi keyboard, oh, a Logitech, Logitech keyboard, uh, but it's a Windows keyboard configuration. Okay, um, yeah, uh, with your Mac? Um, oh, it must be, uh, so not a MacBook, like a, like a Mac um, um, uh, that has an external keyboard. Yeah, you can get keyboards. It probably works fine, but, but yeah, there's some things that would be different. Like on a Mac, there's command instead of control. But uh, um, uh, if you got a different, and a lot of times if you buy an external uh, keyboard for a computer, you can get a Mac version or a, a PC version. So... Um, uh, maybe, uh, maybe by mistake they sent you, or maybe you, you ordered the wrong one. I don't know. Maybe there may be, you may want to look to see if there is a Mac version of that keyboard or the, the quick fix is you could just kind of, um, I believe you could probably just map different keys, like, like m turn the control into a command or whatnot. But if you're used to Mac, you probably, I would suspect you would want a Mac keyboard, uh, for your own sanity, if nothing else. <laughs> Um, uh, UB James says, I'm getting a lot of value like always. Sending love from Nigeria. Welcome from Nigeria. That's great. Uh, you are the best. <laughs> oh, shucks. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, you pronounced my name perfectly. Cheers. Great. Awesome. Thanks, UB, for the kind words and, uh, and welcome. Um, uh, oh, I see another, uh, another message here from Frank. Just takes a couple seconds before the YouTube chat pops up in my eCam so that I can put it on screen like this. Uh, Learning with Frank says, I use Windows keyboards on my Mac minis all the time. It works fine. All right, perfect. Perfect. And that's probably what I should should do. Well, actually, the, the keyboard I use, actually, yeah, the keyboard I use is a Logi. I don't know how you pronounce that. Logi. It's Logitech, but, but Logi as well. Um, that one, the MX Keys, I think it's called. Um, and it has control and command on it. It can be used for either Mac or PC. And in fact, I use it for both. I use the two different keys. If I have my PC on, it's, it's, uh, I press and hold number two. If I turn on my, or for the Mac, I mean, and for the PC, it's number one. So that's the way I use it. So perfect. Great, Frank. Um, yes, okay. So where are we? Playhead. So this is something that uh, some... 
I think it was uh, I think it was you, Pam, actually, that asked me this question uh, over the weekend um, about the playhead. Uh, uh, Pamela goes back and forth between two iMacs, one this and Apple keyboard. Okay, very good. Back and forth, very good, perfect. Um, so yeah, so might just uh, take some getting used to with a PC keyboard, but uh, as Frank says, it should work just fine. Um, so uh, let me show you something uh, about the playhead. So a question came up, and I believe it was Pam that asked me, and we'll just pop over to my uh, screen share again. Um, if you look at the Camtasia's playhead, okay, see how there's a green and a red uh, icon, I guess, a green one to the left of the playhead and then the red one to the right, okay? Um, Sometimes they get separated. And the question was, how do I get them quickly back like this to snap back into place? So by separated means like this, okay? See how I can separate them like that? So there's a couple reasons you may want to do that. Um, so first of all, if you want to play a section, so there's no audio in this file, but just pretend there was. If I wanted to play that section, I would, I would click and drag these uh, to select the section I'm dealing with and click play. Now let me let me make a smaller selection here. And I'll zoom in, hit play. And it stops right there. So I go back to the beginning. Or even if my playhead is outside the arrow, hit play, it'll just play that section inside, okay? Actually, this this arrow here probably takes it. Oh no, that took that whole thing back there. <laughs> Okay, so that if you wanted to play a section, you could you could uh, denote that section by putting the green and the red uh, sides of the playhead to surround that section. You also, if you wanted to delete a certain section of your video, okay, so let's go back here and we'll zoom. Uh, and if I wanted to delete, say, from here over to here, I could drag, see, I clicked and dragged the right edge of that to drag the, to create my selection. I can then hit the delete key and it deleted everything between those two. Okay, like that. Okay, so let's me can let me control Z to go back. So but the specific question was if you get them separated, I believe uh, she was having trouble getting them back. How do you get them back in place? All you do is you go up to the playhead here and double click. And that tightens them right back up, okay? So whether you're within it, you can double click, or even if your playhead is way over here, just double click and it snaps them back into place. Simple as that. Hopefully, does that answer your question, uh, Pamela? Is that, uh, is that what you were looking for? Um, Pamela says six. Oh, wait, no. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Is that, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Pam. Let me know if, uh, let me know if I answered your question with the playhead, if that's exactly what you were looking for. If not, um, oh, and she just said, aha, yes. Okay, perfect. So double click. Remember the double click. Um, I don't typically, uh, do that with the, so I always double click because sometimes I get them separated as well, but I never, I never use them myself to surround a certain section and play a certain section or to delete a section like that. I don't do that. Um, it's just not part of my editing flow. If I wanted to delete a certain section, I'd identify that section like this and I'd hit the S key for split. I'd select what I want to delete first, S to split, and then find the other section S to split again, and then delete, okay? Let me quickly, here's a little preview of the, uh, uh, well, actually, we're about to get to that, keyboard shortcuts. I was just about to show you a keyboard shortcut. Oh, you didn't even see what I did because I wasn't on this screen. I just control Z, control Z back three times. So uh, yeah, so I would put the playhead where I want to delete something, S for split, and then S for split again, and then delete, okay, is what I would do. Now, 
Um, we'll move right on to the next section, which was keyboard shortcuts. So this one is one of my favorites. If I'm, if I'm editing a video of myself, say, and, and I've made mistakes uh, with, with the audio and I needed to delete certain sections, let's say this was a section I wanted to delete and I've already deleted it. Instead of clicking, like selecting everything here and dragging them all back, notice I didn't get this here. So I'd want to go out and make sure I, I you know, let's control Z there, grab everything and move it to tighten it up. There's an easier way to do that, to, to close that gap, so to speak. And all it is, is put your playhead right at the beginning of this one. And to make sure it's at the beginning, double click right there. Okay. So double click your playhead is at the beginning, click off of that. So nothing is selected, hold down shift, grab the playhead and click and drag. Okay. You can't see what everything else is happening. So I'll just make it smaller. Notice how I have a couple clips here. Actually, let's separate them so you can see this in action. So hold shift, click the playhead, drag. And, and I'm moving everything that's to the right of the playhead. And you can even drag beyond it and it won't go beyond. So that ensures you have a tight fit in your video. That's how you do that. So same. Okay. Does that make sense? So remember that a, a cool little, uh, cool little hack, if you will, about how to move everything. If I want to move everything from this point on, I'll double click in here. I'll deselect it, hold shift, click the playhead and just start moving. Okay. Same thing if I, if I have done a bunch of edits and I now want to close the guy, I want to bring everything back to the beginning, right? I can, again, I'll double click here to put the playhead at the very beginning of these clips, click away, hold shift, drag the playhead back and it's right to the beginning. There you go. Hopefully that helps that I, I love that. I use that one all the time. Um, so that, that is probably my favorite, uh, uh, my favorite new shortcut, if you will. Um, let's see. UB James says, hi, Rob, how do we move object on the timeline with the arrow keys on the keyboard? Most time I just want to move stuff without the mouse and get to the perfect point. Okay. Um, not something I usually do a lot of, but let me see if we can figure this out. I think it's in my notes here, my shortcut notes, <laughs> because I'm in the middle of making a shortcut video. Um, if we just want to move, if you highlight it, I think it's, let's see, I wrote this down, comma and period. Try that with something highlighted, go comma, is that working? Let's zoom right in here. Zooming right in. So that moves the playhead comp one frame at a time. The comma and the period moves the, the playhead one frame at a time. So hopefully that helps. Oh, got this comment here. Um, right now, the other thing is the, uh, the snapping. If, if things are snapping together and you don't want them to, right? If you want a little more fine control, then you want to go up here to, uh, uh, to view. And again, I'm on a Mac, right? So things may look a little bit different or things may be in slightly different places on a PC if you're using a PC. But on the Mac, you'd go to view uh, right here. Enable canvas snapping, enable timeline snapping. That's what we're talking about. So we're dealing with the timeline right now. So I, and I have timeline snapping enabled, so I will uncheck this, right? And now it doesn't snap. Now I can actually move one frame at a time. Let's zoom right in all the way in. So each each move here is a frame. And what am I set? 60 frames a second, I believe project settings. I'm at 60 frames a second is what my project is set at. So every, one click like this is a frame. And I know that I can use the comma and the period to move my playhead one frame at a time. If I hold shift, see what's happening there with the, with the playhead. I don't know if I would ever use that. Um, but yeah, so there are, 
all kinds of shortcuts, all kinds of uh, all kinds of shortcuts you could use. And I see Pamela is saying uh, that's better than Ripple. Um, that doesn't work for me. Okay, yeah, there's like a Ripple delete, I believe. I don't use that myself either. Um, but yeah, there are so many different shortcuts. Um, I don't use a quarter of them, probably, I don't think. Um, but uh, if you want to know how to go to find out what the shortcuts are, because some are different between PC and, and Macs, um, uh, the split one, for instance, is the letter S on a PC, and on a Mac it's something different, or it was. Mine's now S because I changed it. <laughs> uh, but what is it? Split. Command T on a Mac is split. Uh, or you can just hit this... Uh, um, where is it here? With something selected, you go up here. I think it's this one right here. Yeah, split. You can click on that icon. But generally speaking, thing you can do things a lot faster if you get to know at least some shortcuts. Don't worry about trying to memorize them all because there's too many. Um, get used to a handful of shortcuts to make your editing life easier. Uh, and then maybe every few weeks or every couple of weeks, every week if you want, uh, whatever your your schedule's like, introduce a new shortcut that, that you might uh, find useful. And you can go up to, on a Mac, you would go to Camtasia up here, and then down to Settings. On a PC, I believe it's, I wrote it down. Uh, so Mac is Camtasia and then Settings. On a PC, I believe you have to go up to Edit, and then Preferences is where you find it. I think, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Again, I used a PC forever, uh, for 10 years or more, uh, Camtasia on a PC. Um, so let me click Settings. And here is, so I'm already on Shortcuts. So here you can you can change your settings for ge your general settings, your recording settings, your timeline settings. If you want to set the uh, default animation duration. So every time I bring an animation down on the screen, mine defaults to one second long. You can change that for yourself if you want. Um, and so on. Uh, project settings. So mine, whenever I create a new project, it automatically starts off being 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames a second. Okay. Um, and then shortcuts. So that's where you find it. There's the shortcuts. And here they all are. So animation and effects. Control T. Again, I'm on a Mac. Control T. Or sorry, shift. That's shift T is add last use transition. Okay, add custom animation to shift A. I never use that. I just go up to, you know, animations and I grab a custom animation and I drag it down. Okay, now I've just lost my, uh, where do I find, here we go. I'm getting, I'm getting my uh, windows all messed up here. I got a lot, I've probably got eight windows open. <laughs> three on this monitor. Um, so yeah, one thing to keep in mind though, whatever the shortcuts are, if there's something that works better for you, you can change these. Okay. So for instance, in the, let's go to timeline editing. Okay. Um, so in timeline editing, split selected media, you see that right here is set to S. Again, it was, what was it? Command T on a Mac. So if I wanted to get this back to Command T, I highlight it and I will press Command T. No? S. Okay, I had to I had to delete it first. Command T. Oh no, sorry. Because I have my command and control switched, I have to do control. There we go. That's how you get it back, okay? And I could I could click this to undo it, or I can click in here, delete it. If I want to set it back to S for split, since I've gotten so used to S being the, the uh, uh, default for split, I'll click shortcut, I'll type S. That's now my shortcut, and that's it. So you can change, I mean, you may, for the most part, most of these are, are kind of well thought through. Um, there was a time that this split command, I actually changed it to control B. 
And the reason that is, is because I had been spending a lot of time in DaVinci Resolve, and that's their standard cut or split um, uh, shortcut. So I changed Camtasia to that. I've since changed it back. It's just easier. Why hit two keys when I can hit one, <laughs> right? So that's the way I have mine set up. And again, there's, there's timeline editing shortcuts, timeline navigation. So zooming in and out. Again, zooming in and out, I use the mouse wheel on my, on my mouse. To, you know, push, I move that back and forth to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, but there's so many different things you can do here. So yeah, I'm using my mouse wheel there to scroll up and down. Um, uh, there's recorder options, project options, program, program options, uh, you know, open the favorites tab F again, I'll just, I'll just click on it. Um, so a lot of these I don't use, but you may, you may find them helpful. So that's where you find them. Uh, and again, watch for the video coming out probably by the end of the week, maybe Friday's video. Um, on shortcuts and I'll go through my favorite ones um, as well as some that I think that uh, that uh, that will be helpful for you so uh, let's just take a quick look at the chat here um, learning with Frank says is there a way that you know of to change the canvas background I can do it in a project but I'm thinking globally that it isn't black um, I don't know I have never done that, uh, uh, but yeah, like you say, um, to change it from project to project, you just go up here and change your project settings, right? And change the background in here and you can change it to whatever color you want. Um, okay. Uh, but to change the global setting, I don't believe there is a way. If there was a way, it would be back in that same place in settings, uh, general, uh, on startup, open home, default tool, uh, auto save every one minute, enable system color picker, send you uh, notifications, system permissions, delete all proxy videos, beta, delete timeline cache, uh, mobile sharing. No, I don't see anything in there. Uh, pro maybe in project. You know what? This is probably where it would be if it existed and it does not. Canvas dimensions. You can set your dimensions and your frame rate. Um, and then what to do when adding high frame rate, frame rate media to a lower frame rate project. I would suspect if you wanted to set a default color as your project background color, it would be here and it's not. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say you can't do that. You'd have to change it every time you add a, you change a, or you create a project, I believe. Um, uh, yes. Uh, let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, Yubi says, uh, actually, before I get to that, just, uh, just to kind of put a bow on this one, Probably not possible. It's a pretty specific ask. Yeah, I don't know how uh, how high on their priority list that would be because it isn't that difficult to change. Uh, it's just a couple clicks, but you know, um, if you can save a couple clicks. Uh, I wonder if you created a project with a specific background color and saved that as a template and then opened that template up. Perhaps that's one way to solve your, your problem. Um, if you always want the same color that's not white as your project background color. You might want to have a look at that. That might, that might help. Um, again, templates is not something uh, I've really used that much, but I am getting into it because it would save me time. And uh, quite honestly, it's a, it's a really good uh, time saver if you're creating a bunch of videos for the same client or for yourself that, that, that all include a lot of the same elements, creating a template could be a real time saver. So try creating a template and setting the background color and uh, see if that works. Okay. Um, so back to uh, UB says, thanks Rob, seems you didn't understand me. I'm not talking about moving the playhead. I mean, moving the object, like say a media or something on that timeline. Okay, moving an object or media on the timeline. Let me go back to your previous comment. 
How do we move an object on the timeline with the arrow keys on the keyboard? Huh, uh, I'm not sure. I wonder if you hold shift maybe would be the first thing that I would try. Let's, uh, let's come in here. Let's select this. Hold shift. There you go. I knew that. <laughs> okay, so let me get this off the screen. We don't need that one. This is another, here, let me remove all empty tracks, make it clean. So here is, here's a project um, I've got open here. To move, so highlight your object. If you want to move your object, object, highlight the object and use the arrow keys. It's moving basically one pixel at a time for each key, up, down, sideways. If you want it to move faster than that, hold shift and use your arrow keys. I think that moves it, I want to say it's 10 pixels at a time. Although I'm not sure. What if I hold control and shift? Nothing happens. So that's how you do it. Highlight it and then hold shift and then move your four arrow keys left, right, up and down. And if you want more fine movement, don't hold shift and just move the arrow keys. I don't know if you can see that that's moving as I tap the arrow keys, but it is. <laughs> Okay, hopefully that helps. <laughs> think we got to the, uh, think I, under, I understand your, problem, your question now. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so uh, where are we? Where are we? Let me just double check here. If you have any other questions, let me know. Now's your chance to get any last questions in. We're probably, um, I'm still okay for time, but we've been at this for an hour 45 minutes, an hour and 45 minutes so far. Um, and I have gone through everything that I wrote down. I did it this way. It's over here for you guys, right here, all this stuff here. <laughs> I've gone through all of that. Um, so just to recap, um, there's a video that I've already uploaded that's coming out tomorrow on Google Drive. There's another video that I'm in the middle of creating on shortcuts that'll be later in the week. And then probably Friday, we'll come up with that. Um, let me know if I should be going live Thursdays as well. Is once a week enough? So if I'm coming out with three videos a week and going live once a week, so videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, a live stream on Tuesday, is that good? Because if that's good for you guys, that extra day on Thursday will give me more time to um, create more videos, So right? So, uh, or would you like me to go live twice a week? Um, let me know. Um, I, I will say that last week uh, on Thursday, there wasn't very many people there, uh, just a few. But uh, again, that's because I didn't advertise it very well that I was going to do that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so let me uh, get a couple of answers here. Enjoyed the stream, have to run off. Thanks again, hope to catch more in the future. Thanks, Frank. Take care, hope to see you next week. Um, that's great. And then Square Egg, Louise, I believe. Uh, once a week is good, awesome, perfect. Uh, and that's good too, because then, then we'll have a backlog of three videos that I will have released that we can talk about if, you have, if any other questions came up. And uh, just kind of save up your questions for the live stream. Uh, or ask them if you if anything comes up when you see a video, ask ask a question in the comments of that video, and I can uh, and I can address it in the comments if it's a simple uh, um, question. I may be able to answer right in the comments. Otherwise, we can I can talk about it in the live stream on the Tuesday. So uh, yeah, okay. No, it sounds uh, and Pamela Powers also says once a week. Perfect. Perfect. So. Uh, we will continue doing this. I, I won't go unless something comes up. So the one thing that could come up is Camtasia. If Camtasia or TechSmith, if, Cam, if TechSmith comes out with the newest version of Camtasia kind of last minute and I don't have any advance notice that it's coming out, I may go live right away to talk about it. Um, I will also go live on the Tuesday. So that's, we'll, 
we, you can basically write that one in stone. Tuesdays at one o'clock Eastern time, two o'clock my time, uh, I'll go live every week. But uh, I also will go live when Camtasia comes out with their next major release so that we can talk about it and, uh, and kind of learn all the new and wonderful things that they put in the, the latest version, Camtasia 2024, when it comes out. I'm assuming there's gonna be some awesome stuff in there. <laughs> there usually is with their annual release. Um, so that would be uh, a reason for me to go live at another time, not just on the Tuesday. Uh, and Renee says, yes, agree. Once a week is great. Perfect. So I think that's settled then <laughs> for this current group. Um, yeah. And uh, I think that's where we'll leave it. So yeah, look for a video tomorrow, Friday and Monday. Uh, and then we'll go live again on Tuesday next week. Um, and uh, I think that's it. So if uh, there are no other questions, thank you once again, everybody who stopped in for stopping by. Uh, if it was your first time, welcome aboard. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, if you're a returning uh, uh, member, subscriber, thank you for uh, your support. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll keep doing this. We'll keep this ball rolling. And I will see you next week with fresh content to talk about. Thanks again, guys, and have a great week and stay safe. Bye for now.